Hi, Bill Cullen here, slipping out the welcome mat for another edition of Cullen's Adventures. We've uh, come equipped this time with another collection of historical matchups. As in, for instance, could Napoleon have eaten a chocolate bar? Well, for the answer to this and other riddles along the same lines, stay tuned. Our program is presented as a special service by this station and is furnished by Grolier Incorporated, publishers of the Book of Knowledge, the foremost children's encyclopedia for more than 50 years. Could Napoleon Bonaparte have nibbled on a chocolate bar? Nope, he could not have. Hernando Cortez, the Spanish conquistador, came back to Europe from his New World triumphs, bearing the ingredients for a new chocolate drink, later called cocoa. But it was another 300 years before anybody figured out how to produce a solid bar of the stuff. Then finally, an enterprising Dutch manufacturer had the sweet notion that cocoa might taste better if some of its natural fat, or cocoa butter, was removed. He pressed the butter out of the roasted cocoa beans and then mixed sugar and some of the cocoa butter with the dry cocoa. After cooking the mixture, he discovered that he had made a solid substance very good to eat, to wit, a chocolate bar. The year then, 1828, which means that poor old Napoleon, who breathed his last on the island of Elba in 1821, missed the delights of chocolate bar nibbling by just seven years. Next, could Benjamin Franklin's mother have read him the story of Little Red Riding Hood? Well, the answer is yes, but there's a proviso, if she knew how to read French. Ben Franklin was born in 1706. Little Red Riding Hood appeared in print for the first time nine or ten years before that. Some literary historians credit the story to Charles Perrault, the Frenchman listed as the author of Cinderella. Other experts claim that both stories were popular folk tales long before Monsieur Perrault's arrival on the literary scene and that he merely collected and published them. Well, in any case, Little Red Riding Hood was included in Perrault's book, Tales of Mother Goose, published in 1697, and the Brothers Grimm put out another version of the story not long afterward. So Ben Franklin's mother had plenty of time to get a copy. Now, could Abraham Lincoln have taken a trip on the Brooklyn Bridge? No. Lincoln died in 1865. The Brooklyn Bridge, probably the most famous of the early American steel suspension bridges, wasn't open to traffic until 1883. Here's another quickie. Could Queen Elizabeth have played the saxophone? Assuming that she were able to play, no to that one too. The saxophone was invented by a Belgian instrument maker named Adolf Sax, S-A-X, who lived from 1791 until 1865. Queen Elizabeth was long gone by then. She lived from 1533 to 1603. Here's another musical could have. Could Chief uh, Sitting Bull have sat through an opera by Richard Wagner? Well, chances are he didn't, for opera companies were few and far between in the wild and woolly areas habituated by the fabled chief of the Sioux. Theoretically, however, he could have been a fancier of Tristan and Isolde, der Meistersinger, and other productions from the prolific pen of composer Richard Wagner. The German composer began writing operas back in the 1840s and kept up the fine habit until the time of his death in 1883. Chief Sitting Bull was born on or about 1834 and lived until 1890. And now time's up. Before we sign off, here's an invitation to those of you with youngsters still in school. We put together a booklet containing some more interesting facts and figures, which I'm sure you'll enjoy reading. If you'd like a copy to pass on to the kids, let us hear from you. It's free. All we need is your name and address printed plainly, please, on a postcard. Mail the card to Cullen's Adventures, Box 3400, Grand Central Station, New York City, New York, 10017. We'll send the booklet right out to you. I'll be back again tomorrow with another of these Cullen's Adventure segments furnished by Grolier Incorporated, publishers of the Book of Knowledge. Until then, thank you and goodbye for now.